Hey everybody, how's it going? Let's talk about your home recording studio. Today, let's cover the topic of miking an acoustic guitar. Now, you may have tried this on your own and uh, maybe not happy with the results. Uh, maybe you have yet to try it and it's something that uh, you're looking into uh, and you just want to get a little info about it. Hopefully, I can help you out here. So, on the face value, miking an acoustic guitar, kind of like I said about miking uh, an electric guitar amp, there's not much to it. Your acoustic guitar makes a noise, you stick a microphone in front of it, and there you go. You miked an acoustic guitar. End of video. See you guys next time. But there is some technique to it, different uh, microphones, different microphone placements, um, some things to kind of have under your belt to be able to make some informed decisions and get a sound that you're happy with, get something that works for you, for your style, uh, and for your mix. All right, so the very first thing to know, um, before you even break out the microphone, before you point it at the guitar or anything, you got to get your guitar sounding as good as it can sound, right? Uh, I, I've harped on this in the past. Uh, there, there's no fixing a bad sound. Uh, you know, pretty much rule number one would be tune your guitar. I hate to be the one to have to break this, break this to you, but nobody wants to listen to your out of tune, crappy sounding guitar. Tuning is a skill, and if you're not good at it, that's okay. Practice it. Practice it like you like you would any other skill. Um, for your instrument, um, we, you know, maybe the intonation's a little bit off, so tuning with a tuner doesn't yield a, a nice sweet tuning. Uh, you gotta start learning to use your ear and, and try to get the tuning as sweet as you can for your instrument. Uh, that's another thing to take into uh, consideration, and it, you know, this is uh, uh, November here in Kansas City, which uh, it's the turning of the seasons, even though it's unseasonably warm right now, but the weather's getting cooler, uh, which means that the air is getting drier. Uh, temperature and humidity, you know, th these things are made of wood, and Wood is very sensitive to uh, changes in temperature and humidity, and so that can change the way your instrument plays, the way it feels, uh, the way it tunes. If you know how to adjust your truss rod, if you know how to uh, adjust your instrument, uh, now this is a good time, like in the fall, early winter, is a good time to adjust it because the, yeah, the, the, the dry air, the cooler temperatures. Um, same thing for the spring, early summer, the warmer temperatures, more humidity, uh, the wood's gonna swell a little. This time of year, it's gonna contract a little. Um, if you don't know how to adjust your instrument yourself, it's a good idea to take it to a professional, take it to a tech. Um, your local mom and pop uh, music store uh, probably has somebody that knows how to set the truss rod. Set, uh, on an acoustic guitar, the intonation isn't really something that's easily set, and if the intonation is really out on your instrument, then yeah, it's probably time to consult a professional and see what they can do about it. If you're having trouble where your, your guitar is not in tune, no matter how hard you try, uh, I mean, it, it could be. Maybe you suck at tuning. Hey, that's all right. I suck at it sometimes, too. Um, but a more uh, likely explanation is the intonation could be off, and maybe you've got to... Um, have somebody take a look at it and see what they can do to get it sounding the best that they that it can. Okay, another thing to do before you point a microphone at a guitar and start recording is change your strings. Get some new, nice, fresh strings on there. Uh, that's going to make tuning your guitar a lot easier. It's going to make the intonation a little uh, more solid, more accurate. Uh, the old dead strings, uh, they're they just don't really sound all that great, and you know if you're if you're going through the trouble to record something and and get a song put together, uh, yeah, you might as well give it everything you got here. So slap some new strings on your instrument. I am going to do that myself here. Um, I'm going to go into time lapse mode. I'm not going to make you watch the painful process of me slowly changing the strings on this thing. So I'll see you here in a couple minutes. Okay, I've got my strings all changed. Uh, I've got it all tuned back up. Hopefully I got the strings stretched out and all the uh, slipping around the tuning pegs is over with now. Uh, I've got a couple of cameras set up here, one over my shoulder and one of my computer monitors here. It's my first try of multiple camera stuff, so bear with me a little bit here. But when showing mic placement on, a, on an acoustic guitar, uh, I've noticed from watching the videos that I've seen, it's a little hard to, to tell from one static camera position really where people have things placed and um, being able to make a decision 
uh, on, on how that sounds. So I'm hoping the, uh, between the two cameras here, uh, I can kind of illustrate distance and position and everything. All right, for miking an acoustic guitar, my go-to choice, my first choice, is going to be a small diaphragm condenser, uh, like this fella here. <laughs> Gotta be smarter than the stand. Okay, now the camera's not gonna focus on it here, but um, this is a, uh, th this one in particular is a Shure SM81. Uh, I like the small diaphragm condenser because of its very fast transient response. I like um, how well it picks up just that, that attack of, of when you, that kind of percussive sound of hitting the strings. Uh, most of the time when I record acoustic guitar, uh, I plan on using it in a mix where it's gonna be competing with other instruments. And uh, really, once a mix gets busy, the, the tonality of what the acoustic guitar is doing tends to get kind of lost. You know, you don't really even necessarily hear the chords because the, the, the bass guitar is playing the root notes and the, you know, electric guitar or piano or keyboards or synthesizers, whatever, are all um, uh, kind of taking care of the chords and the, the specific notes and the chords. Um, the acoustic guitar, once things get busy, tends to get kind of lost. Uh, in a mix like that, I, I really like using a small diaphragm condenser <clears throat> because uh, it preserves that, that pick attack. And, and in a busy mix, that's kind of all that's left. That's kind of all that distinguishes an acoustic guitar in a mix. Now, in a, in a smaller mix where the acoustic guitar is really featured, where it's a, kind of a feature instrument, um, maybe it's just a guitar and a vocal or a couple of guitars, something you know where it plays a larger role, a large diaphragm condenser uh, is a good choice because it'll, it'll really capture a lot of detail. Uh, it might not quite have that, that really fast transient response, uh, but that's okay uh, because uh, the, the, that sound isn't really going to um, drive the sound of, of the acoustic guitar in a mix like that. So always a good choice. But since uh, I'm geared towards beginners here and I know that as a beginner, uh, it, it's not necessarily about choosing <laughs> the right mic for the job. A lot of times it's, it, it's just about using whatever mic you have. Uh, so a dynamic mic, you know, uh, like a, uh, I have a Shure SM57 here. Um, I say let's give them all a try and let's see what they, what they sound like. Um, and just to, just to get an idea. Okay, so first let's give a try to the Shure SM81 to a, to a small diaphragm condenser. Uh, let's talk a little bit about mic placement, uh, about where, relative to the guitar, you place the microphone. Really, on an acoustic guitar, this is what makes the sound. Uh, people tend to think that the sound hole is what makes the sound, but the sound hole is just there uh, to let the pressure regulate as the, as, as the soundboard vibrates. I mean, when, when you strike a chord, that makes the instrument vibrate. The strings vibrate, that vibration gets transferred. Uh, the air inside of the body here uh, vibrates. It, it uh, excites all that air in there. And, and it's this big piece of spruce, uh, in the case of this instrument, spruce, uh, that vibrates. And that's what projects the sound. That's what gives the acoustic guitar its tonality. That's, what, that's where the, the distinct uh, nature, the distinct character of an acoustic guitar really comes from, is from this big piece of wood on top vibrating. So take that in con into consideration. The sound hole isn't what makes the sound, it's just there so that as the top vibrates, the air pressure can, uh, can easily uh, be regulated. Otherwise, the, the top wouldn't vibrate very freely. If, if this were all sealed, uh, anytime the top wanted to move downward, it would encounter air, uh, resistance from the air pressure and it wouldn't be able to vibrate, you know, move very far downward. And every time it wanted to uh, vibrate outward, it would create a slight vacuum and it wouldn't be able to vibrate very freely in that direction either. So the sound holes here just to, just to allow the top to vibrate uh, freely. Uh, spruce is a very good wood uh, about that. It, uh, it's what they use in pianos, in the soundboard and pianos. Uh, it, it, it's just a very, um, uh, I don't know whether to call it flexible wood, but it vibrates freely. Uh, it produces a, a nice pleasing tone for an acoustic guitar. So with that in mind, 
What most people want to do the very first time you uh, put a microphone on an acoustic guitar is to mic the sound hole. And I, I'm going to just right off the bat recommend against that. And that's because you'll tend to get a very boomy sound. It'll be very bassy, um, especially the, the, uh, this size and shape of a guitar is called a dreadnought. And it's made to be just a big, loud guitar. Uh, the smaller body sizes don't produce quite the amount of volume and they, they have a little bit more balanced frequency response. A dreadnought like this, um, really these are kind of designed for bluegrass, um, even though I'm not a bluegrass player at, at all. Uh, I just like the, I like that full bodied sound that a dreadnought um, provides. So a big, loud, full range guitar with a, uh, this, this, you know, really large body, it's going to generate a lot of bass. Uh, so when recording a dreadnought, mitigating bass, you know, dealing with the bass is kind of uh, the majority of the struggle that we're going to go through here. So let's not mic the sound hole. Let's not just put the microphone right in front of the sound hole uh, because you're going to get so much bass. Uh, now the same kind of goes uh, for miking behind the bridge, for miking this area of the guitar. Uh, you'll, you'll hear a lot more of that, since this is kind of what's producing the tone, you'll hear more of the, the tone of the guitar, um, but there's still going to be a lot of bass. I mean, you know, this, this thing can vibrate at a pretty low frequency uh, in conjunction with all the other frequencies it vibrates at. So it can really kind of project a lot of bass. Uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm really just talking about like a single mic technique. I'm just going to use one microphone for these examples. Um, a lot of people like to use multiple microphones and, and blend them in their mix in order to really capture the different uh, sounds that different parts of the instrument tend to produce. Uh, that's fine, but uh, I'm going to keep that out of the scope of this, uh, this video here. So what I'm going to recommend, what my, my starting position always is, is I tend to mic right where the neck meets the body, this neck body joint. Uh, I, I find that, th that this is a really good starting point uh, because it's far enough away from the sound hole that you don't get quite as much uh, of that boomy, bassy sound that will really dominate uh, what the microphone picks up. Uh, but it also, as you move away from the sound hole, as you position your mic farther and farther away from the sound hole, more towards the, 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 the neck, the headstock, uh, it's going to get thinner and thinner sounding. You're going to hear a little bit more of the strings, uh, maybe if there's any fret buzz or anything, you're going to hear a little more of that. Uh, hopefully you have your instrument adjusted to where you don't really get uh, much, if any, fret buzz. Um, being the changing the seasons here, uh, where I live right now, uh, my guitar is a little uh, out of adjustment, so it's, a, it's a ringing just a little bit if I really dig into a, a note. Uh, a, a truss rod adjustment will will take care of that in a hurry. So let's, uh, let's take a look at kind of a, a go-to, if there is such a thing, there's really not, this is really subjective, so it really uh, depends on what you're after, for your sound uh, and, and your guitar. You know, like I said, this is just a big, loud, uh, full, broad range instrument. Um, if you have, if your instrument sounds different, uh, different mic positions uh, are gonna are gonna work better for you, and and other mic positions will not work. Uh, I am going to start, and hopefully between my two cameras here, <clears throat> I'm gonna start by just pointing the microphone right directly at where the uh, neck meets the body, and this is generally, uh, especially on this instrument, uh, about where I end up now. Distance. Uh, the closer you get, uh, of course, the louder it's going to be. Uh, maybe if you're in an environment where you don't have a nice quiet room, uh, where maybe there's some air conditioning noise or something, and you want the direct sound of your guitar to be louder versus uh, any slight ambient noises. I mean, you really want to minimize ambient noises if at all possible, uh, because really nothing you do with a microphone is going to get rid of those, <laughs> but um, if, if you're going to drop this track into a mix, uh, if it's going to be a part of an ensemble, a band or something, you might be able to get away with um, a little bit of, you know, background noise and stuff. Very few of us live in ideal uh, uh, locations for things like this. So distance, um, if you get it close, um, 
you're going to pick up less of the room ambience as well. It's going to be louder. Uh, you're probably going to get more bass because you're, you're closer to this big vibrating piece of wood that's the top of the guitar. Um, as, you, as you back the microphone off, uh, you're going to get more room ambience. Uh, hear more your room. Uh, if you don't like the way your room sounds, uh, then maybe miking farther away isn't for you. Um, but you're also going to get less uh, bass uh, from the, the, the vibrating top of the guitar. Uh, for me, I, I, I feel like it sounds a little more um, balanced for this big loud guitar. Uh, but a, a good kind of starting point is to, I would say, anywhere between 8 inches to 16 inches, you know, it's a pretty broad range. It's an eight inch range. Um, but I, I, I would start somewhere in there. Uh, I, I usually go with maybe about 12 inches away. I don't like to get the mic too close to this. Um, this microphone uh, will pick up a relatively uh, substantial amount of proximity effect. So it tends to, to notice when things are boomy. Uh, and this guitar produces a lot of bass. So it will also get boomy in a hurry. So I don't want to get too close here. I'm going to go uh, maybe, um, yeah, maybe about 12 inches away. And I, I'm just, I, I have no idea really how long, how far that is without breaking out a tape measure. All right, I'm probably about a foot away, uh, pointed right at where the neck meets the body. Let's see what that one sounds like. Yeah, a little ringy. I, I, I need to uh, get this thing adjusted. Uh, like I said, the changing of the seasons, uh, it's just a, a little bit out of adjustment. Okay, let's, um, let's scoot the mic farther away. And I have a feeling with, uh, you know, I'm not monitoring here, so I don't know uh, exactly how it's going to come out. Uh, I've, I've mic'd like this enough times that I, I'm pretty sure that it'll be relatively balanced, but still probably a little boomy. Um, if I were to use it in a mix, I would probably need to add like a high pass filter, uh, maybe about 100 to 120 hertz or so, just to start uh, uh, getting some of that low end kind of scooped off of it. But there's probably a nice amount of detail. Uh, other than that, uh, probably relatively balanced. So let's scoot the mic away. And I'm going to go maybe, I don't know how far that is, two feet, maybe, you know, 20 inches, 22 inches, I don't know. I'm going to try to keep it pointed right at the, uh, at the neck body joint here. And let's hear what that one sounds like. All right, so I bet that one's more roomy. Uh, I'll probably hear more of the room acoustics in that. Uh, it's probably more balanced as far as the frequency spectrum goes. It's probably not nearly as boomy. Uh, probably a little bit more since it's farther away. You're probably hearing a little bit more of the, the kind of woodsy tone, but also, you know, more room acoustics. So that may or may not be what you want. Let's scoot it up nice and close and see uh, what happens here. I'm going to go, uh, I would say maybe, I don't know, four inches or so away from the neck body joint or four inches away from the, uh, uh, the fretboard of the neck body joint. Uh, this is probably going to be louder. I'll see if I can normalize it and post and, and maybe, uh, uh, keep it from blowing anybody's ears out here, but let's take a listen. weak fretting on that one, but okay, yeah, so it's probably a lot more bass, a lot more kind of boomy, a lot louder, uh, but probably less room uh, in, the, in the signal there. Okay, let's try scooting the mic. Let's kind of work our way uh, from here kind of back towards the, the, the rear of the guitar here. So let's scoot it back. It's definitely one kind of tough thing about when you're miking acoustic guitar 
uh, you're, you're using a microphone that doesn't move and you're, you're micing something that moves with you. So you can't really get too emotive uh, while you're playing and start swaying and moving around and, and you got to be kind of uh, careful to return to the same position if you're doing multiple takes, um, if you're trying to double something, uh, if you're trying to uh, comp multiple takes together to try to return to the same mic position um, relative to the guitar, uh, because every time you move, it's going to make some subtle changes about how the mic hears the microphone. Anyways, I'll shut up. Let's hear sound hole, uh, maybe about eight or nine inches away. Okay, so that's probably uh, uh, substantially boomier. Um, you're probably hearing more lows relative to highs compared to the other mic positions. I'm not gonna do the distance and, and closer test on that. Uh, let's instead, let's move down and let's mic about eight or nine inches away from the bridge. This is gonna be interesting because I'm kind of out of room to uh, move my mic. Um, okay. All right, yeah, I'd say that's that's probably about the same. I, this isn't a scientific kind of thing. I, I'm not uh, breaking out the tape measure or anything, so I would say that's uh, you know about nine inches, maybe ten inches. And so I'm out of room to adjust my mic stand, so I'm gonna adjust me instead. Scoot a little closer. Yeah, there we go. Pointed right at the bridge. Can you see that up there? Of course, you can't really see the bridge. Yeah. All right. one or two strings drifting out of tune a little bit. Okay, um, on that one, honestly, I don't mic the bridge very often. Uh, a lot of people, when they start using multiple microphones, they like to have one around the bridge, probably because it's far enough away from the sound hole, you're not getting quite the amount of boom, but it's starting to get closer to the soundboard, so you'll hear a little bit more of that woodsy character uh, of an acoustic guitar. So let's try one more position, and let's scoot it back, and basically let's, let's mic this uh, lower bout this uh, big vibrating soundboard back here and see what that sounds like. I'm gonna have to just scoot myself. I'm out of room to adjust my mic. So I'm gonna adjust myself and let's see if I can get to where I'm about nine inches away maybe. Okay. That's pretty close. And you know, as you can tell, we're only dealing with a matter of a couple of inches difference between these different positions, so, you know, between the neck body joint, the middle of the sound hole. I mean, you're only talking six or seven inches uh, difference. The difference between the, the, the sound hole and the bridge, maybe seven or eight inches, and between the bridge and the middle of this soundboard, I mean, talking maybe four inches or so. So, as you, you know, start to get the idea that it really is kind of a game of inches, and, and these small adjustments can make some pretty big difference uh, in the way it sounds. All right, let's hear this. Okay, all right, I'm a little curious to hear uh, what that sounds like myself once I play this back because uh, yeah, this is not a mic position I really ever use uh, on its own. Okay, let's add a little bit of variation to this. So let's try a couple of different microphones. Uh, I'm gonna stick with uh, the neck body joint, uh, probably about like um, eight or 12 inches away uh, as kind of, kind of a, a common point here. Uh, just because I don't want this video to end up being 45 minutes long, I'm trying them all, so let's give a large diaphragm condenser a try. Okay, now I have a large diaphragm condenser. Uh, I've got it pointed at the neck body joint, and I've got it, I would say, a good foot 
away. Uh, I know that I'm not going to want to get any closer than that uh, with this microphone. It's just, it's just going to turn out boomy. So, and again, I'm probably making a big mistake here, not uh, monitoring uh, this through headphones, but um, I, I'm uh, just as curious as I hope you are curious as well what it's going to sound like here, um, you know, each of these clips here. So uh, if I need to, I'll add some comments in, in post uh, in case I'm way off base about anything, but let's give this a try. All right, cool. Yeah, I hadn't recorded acoustic with this uh, in a while, so I don't have any uh, immediate recollections of um, exactly what it sounds like. So I'd be curious to hear that. Okay, I call this my last resort, and um, based on the microphones I have and the microphones I've tried over the years, um, this uh, would be probably the last one I would reach for out of my, my collection. Uh, this is a Shure SM57. It's a dynamic microphone. It, um, it, it's lower output and it's less sensitive. Um, but honestly, when you're just starting out, uh, you don't really have the luxury of, uh, of a selection of microphones, so you use what you have. And there's nothing wrong with using a dynamic mic on an acoustic, but let's take a, a quick listen here. Uh, same mic position, except for I've got it just a little bit closer, maybe about uh, seven or eight inches um, uh, away from the fretboard, uh, just because it is a little less sensitive. Um, I might actually move it in just a, just a hair more. And uh, let's take a listen to what this sounds like. Probably just a little less detailed. Uh, uh, I... I you know, this is my very first microphone. Uh, I've, this is the one that I've used the longest. Uh, it's probably one of the ones I've used the most out of my limited, you know, microphone exposure. Um, I recorded acoustic with this for years until I uh, started getting more microphones in my collection. Um, so you can still get some good results with it. Um, there, it does have its own frequency response. Uh, I, I've heard it <laughs> enough uh, that it, in my own recordings, in my old ones, I can kind of recognize it. Um, but I'm sure that there are countless uh, hit records that, that have an SM57 recording and acoustic guitar. Um, nothing wrong with it at all. Uh, you just might need to treat it a little bit uh, in post. You might need to play with the EQ just a little bit um, to... Uh, you know, give it a, a, a presence rise where it needs it to give it, maybe scoop out a little of the mud, maybe. Uh, but yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. Okay, if you're starting to get the impression that this is all very subjective, that there are a ton of variables involved, and that what might work for one person and one guitar, one mix, might not work for another person, another guitar, another mix. Um, all I can really... If you ask a hundred guitarists, you'll probably get nearly a hundred different responses on how they mic an acoustic guitar. All I can really tell you uh, is these things have worked for me. Uh, I like neck, uh, miking that neck body joint. Uh, I know Warren Hewitt likes to uh, use that same position, only angle the uh, the microphone in uh, to where it's actually pointing at the uh, kind of at the upper bout. Um, you know, have the mic you know, right about there, but just angle it to where it's pointed towards this, uh, you know, this woody part of the lower bout here. Uh, pick up a little bit of that body resonance. Uh, there are so many things you can try. There, uh, you know, some people, uh, oh, I like to put it over my shoulder or next to my ear so it sounds like how I hear it when I play it, or, or you know, out in the room. Uh, if you're miking classical guitar, you might want a lot more room ambience. If, if you're miking a smaller bodied guitar, you might be able to get away with miking the sound hole or, or the bridge or the, the lower bout. There are a lot of variables based on the guitar how you play it, the place it's going to, uh, uh, the role it's going to play in your mix, 
whether it's a featured instrument or whether it's just blended in with a lot of other things. But hopefully I've given you at least a couple of starting points here, uh, some things to consider, uh, some examples to go on. Uh, hopefully you can make some good informed decisions when it comes time to recording acoustic guitar in your home studio. Hey, thank you so much. This has been a ton of fun. I will see you guys next time.